Did you know one of the main reasons chronic infections like Lyme disease and Epstein-Barr just won't go away has to do with your gut health? Hi, I'm Jordan Reisner, and today I've got a clip from a recent interview I did with Dr. Sunja Schwag, one of the leading experts on chronic infections, and he goes in-depth with me about the specific steps that he uses in his practice to treat the gut to eliminate chronic infections. Let's listen in. Lyme disease itself, the Borrelia bacteria, that there's, uh, from the tick-borne infections, um, you know, there are a couple that have a lot of very direct effects on the GI tract. And there's studies with Borrelia burgdorferi, again, the, the bacteria that causes Lyme, showing that it can cause GI tract abnormalities anywhere, basically, along the entire length of the GI tract, from alterations in taste, you know, neurological issues with strength of the tongue, gag reflex, ability to swallow, gastroparesis, um, you know, which is basically paralysis of the, the GI tract, uh, peristalsis, um, or, you know, the, the rhythmic flow of, of muscle contractions that enable us to move food down from the esophagus through the stomach, through the small intestine. You know, so a lot of patients have issues with um, constipation, slowing down of their bowel transit, resulting or triggering bacterial overgrowth, dysbiosis. You know, a lot of patients have changes in appetite, anorexia, weight loss, um, nausea, vomiting, really severe abdominal pain, um, and then also inflammation or enlargement of some of the organs in, in the digestive system, including, you know, liver, you know, inflammation in the liver, um, enlargement of the spleen also. And, uh, for example, Bartonella also, um, I think I mentioned earlier, but it can cause gastritis, um, duodenitis, you know, a lot of inflammation, ulceration, pain. We think of that as a big, um, um, you know, if somebody has a lot of, of reflux or gastritis type pain and they've been tested for H. pylori and they're negative, you know, Bartonella is actually a, a somewhat um, common cause of what we call H. pylori negative gastritis. Um, and there's been work done, this is Dr. Um, Martin Fried, who's shown um, on biopsy of, um, of patients with Lyme that they have inflammation in the GI tract, gastritis, duodenitis, ulceration, um, even histopathology resembling Crohn's disease. Um, and that they actually did biopsies on these patients and found the actual Lyme spirochete in the gastrointestinal tissue. You know, so one of the issues obviously is, is direct invasion and direct inflammation, cytokine production, and resultant um, damage and immune dysregulation in the gut. You know, but the, the other side, you know, independent of the direct effects on the GI tract, is that all these infections cause a huge upregulation of systemic inflammation. And anytime you have that level of increased systemic inflammation, you can, as a result of the, the cytokines, which are these little molecules from which the immune system communicates with itself, you know, we have elevated systemic inflammation. Um, you can get le increased leakiness in the gut. You can get increased leakiness in the blood-brain barrier. You know, the, the body is one system, and so this is constant cross-communication across uh, all these different systems. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. And it, it ties in well to my next question because we've talked a lot about what it is, how we test for it, how it can show up, which is so many different ways, so many different body systems. We talked about how it might show up specifically in the gut. So what can we do to begin to treat chronic illness? And maybe we can start at a high level and then maybe zoom in a little bit more specifically and talk about Lyme itself. Sure. You know, treating these, these complex chronic illnesses is, you know, the thing I love about functional medicine is that, integrative medicine is that, you know, you, you take a step back and, you know, Mark Hyman says, you know, he's a holistic doctor because people come in to see him with a whole list of problems. And, um, you know, you, you have these patients, you have all these problems and the temptation in Western medicine is to, 
take each one of those problems in isolation and, and try to uh, fix it or adjust it or minimize the symptoms, usually by suppressing the symptoms or blocking some receptor or pathway. So what we always want to do, as you know, is to take a step back and, and look at the big picture and look at what's common, what's, what's common to all the problems that this person's having. And to really try to identify and, and fix any imbalances uh, across all body systems. And, you know, so this is, you know, no matter how simple or complicated the case may be, there's always a role for, you know, the basic lifestyle pieces from, you know, gut and diet and nutrition, nutrient density, um, you know, stress reduction, movement, exercise, um, sleep, sleep quality. You know, you always want to take those things on first and, and make sure that, those are optimized because basically everything's going to go better from there. Right. And then from that point, you know, you really want to try to dig in and, and, and push the envelope in terms of, of specific diagnosis on what's happening to the patient in terms of, you know, in, in my world, a lot of this revolves around infectious diseases and, and pathogens. So, you know, doing any and all tests that I can think of to try to, I always like to try to find some evidence on lab testing if possible, because I feel a little safer. You know, it makes me feel more comfortable. It, it help, helps the patient understand what's going on. It also helps to reassure other doctors or family members or practitioners that the patient's working with, you know, that this is, you know, potentially real and important. So if I can find lab evidence of, of some of these infections, um, you know, that's always really critical. And, and, um, and from that point, you know, the, the flip side, actually, you know, if you, if you can't find lab evidence, you know, a lot of times we can do provocation trials with herbs or antibiotics, et cetera, to try to um, answer the question as to, again, you know, is this a driver of the symptoms or is this just a passenger? And if people flare up or improve on one of these treatment trials, you know, frequently that can be an indication that, yes, there is an, an active problem that needs to be addressed. You know, in addition, from a functional medicine point of view, it's always important to look at testing for you know, as many body system imbalances as you can. Again, hormones, um, organic acids, neurotransmitters, um, you know, gut permeability studies, et cetera. So it's almost as if getting ready to treat illnesses like this, we have to almost treat the entire body, improve all the weaknesses and, and issues that are going on throughout someone's body to really get them ready to, to be in a place to, to get rid of this thing. Yes, absolutely. And, um, you know, body and spirit, right? You know, so a lot of the physical stuff, um, physical sort of biomechanical issues that we can find pathophysiological, but then also the whole emotional side, you know, so the more we look big picture and, and look at the person's place, you know, within their life and how they feel about their life and their work and their relationships and any past emotional trauma, um, you know, those pieces become really important and critical as well in order to, to really heal. And what I, what I find interesting, and a lot of my patients, I think, resonate with this is that when you have some of these chronic illnesses, um, it can almost be like a shamanic journey. You know, it can almost be transformative to, you know, to the whole person because of, in part, how you really can't take anything for granted anymore and you have to, you have to pay a lot of close attention and, and be very purposeful about how you're living your life and, and, and all the details of you know, the, the biological systems but also the emotional and spiritual systems um, so, and when people heal and recover, um, a lot of times they find themselves in a very, very different place than when they started, um, very much transformed, you know, so it's kind of a silver lining. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm an eternal optimist. So I, I always hope and expect that people are going to get better. But what's interesting as I do this work more is that I, I see them almost coming to a, a new place in their lives, which actually can be pretty exciting. I'm so grateful you brought that up. I, I wholeheartedly agree. In going through my own chronic health issues with celiac disease and 
and having diarrhea 15 times a day for so long in my life and then coming yeah. through this journey and finding mindfulness-based stress reduction yeah. and healing a lot of emotional issues and, and traumas, I almost, on the other side, view my illness as a gift in some in some ways. And and a lot of times when we work with people, we'll ask, you know, well, maybe what's right about this? What's right about this illness to some extent? And it's an interesting place to be. And many people can't quite get to that place yet. It, it can take some time. But I do definitely uh, deeply personally look back at my health challenge as a journey that has improved me in my physical body and my emotional body and in spiritual sense, too. Yeah, absolutely. 